Hello, this is Anne from Connors Clinic, and today's genetic video is going to be on the APOE gene. This gene is also most well known as the gene to assess risk for Alzheimer's disease. So really the APOE gene is a gene that essentially is kind of like a bucket that is carrying uh, fats to del delivering them to different parts of the body where fats are needed in order to keep those parts of the body healthy. So transportation of lipids is the role of the APOE gene. And again, these fats are protective for the brain and protective for arteries. So these healthy fats um, help to ensure your neurons remain healthy. They are important for proper function of the synapses. So those are the spaces between the neurons that are kind of carrying the signal from one neuron to the other. So that synapse space, um, a lot is going on there, and so these fats help to ensure proper function in that space. They also are important for the integrity of the cell membrane. So the membrane of your cells is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. So you need fats, healthy fats, um, in order to maintain the integrity of the membrane. And then also these fats are important for the reduction of the plaque within the brain and in the arteries. So of course that plaque buildup within the brain is what contributes to Alzheimer's disease and plaque within the arteries contributes to coronary artery disease. So those are things that we don't want. So these fats are really important to help maintain balance within these areas and help uh, maintain proper function and ensure that we have healthy brain uh, and healthy arteries. So with genetics and the APOE gene variants, there is, uh, there's a, a combination of three different alleles. So we either have APOE2, APOE3, or APOE4. And you inherit one allele from each parent. Um, the APOE2 allele is not very common and is associated with decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease, also decreased risk of coronary artery disease. APOE3 is kind of the normal or baseline status, um, so it doesn't increase or decrease risk of either. And APOE4 is really the risk um, or the, the gene, the status that is most commonly associated with Alzheimer's disease and increased risk of artery disease. So this is the one that you don't want. Um, found in about 15% of the population increases the risk again of Alzheimer's disease. And about 40% of people with Alzheimer's disease carry this uh, allele, the, the risk allele APOE4. So this really says that it is a contributor to Alzheimer's disease risk, but it is not the be all end all. So your environment, your lifestyle choices, there are things that you can do to decrease risk even if you have the APOE4 uh, status. So know that uh, this gene, and if you have the variant here, it is not, you know, it's not your destiny to get um, Alzheimer's disease or have coronary artery disease. You're just at an increased risk. So knowing this information is really valuable because you can do things to then reduce your risk. And on your genetic report, this is what this looks like. So the APOE gene is really in the first section, the gut health section, because again, it's a, it's associated with fats and uh, lipid transfer. So it's in the gut health section, um, kind of within that fats, proteins, and carbs section of your genetic report. And you have two different versions of the APOE gene listed here, and then um, the variance column. So depending on the variance that you have, it makes up your genotype. And then you can follow the information over to the left-hand side of your report to see what your APOE status 
is. So the first um, identifying APOE gene here, this is this number that is the unique identifying number and it's uh, listed here. So that's the column here. And the second one is listed in the second column. So depending on your genotype for each of these, you can follow this over and determine your APOE status. So for this person here, who has no variants on either of these genes, they have a TTCC makeup. So you can see TT over here and then CC. So this is the normal expression. So this person has APOE3 status for both of these genes here. So again, this would be normal expression. So that's why there's no variance, normal expression. Um, APOE2 is lower risk of, again, both heart disease and Alzheimer's disease. And this is uh, the APOE4. So you can either have one APOE4 allele or you can have two. So obviously if you have two, that's the highest risk. Um, so you can take a look at your genetic report and kind of determine what your status is. And then things that we can do to help reduce the risk if you do have APOE4 status, which really just means those lipids are not being transported as well as they should throughout the body to have that protective measure in your brain um, and in the cardiovascular system. So here are some supplements that you can take to support um, APO. APOE for risk status. So curcumin, it's really anti-inflammatory throughout the entire body, but we know that uh, curcumin does cross the blood-brain barrier. So it has wonderful anti-inflammatory properties that really help minimize inflammation within the brain. So this is a great supplement. Um, we use something called CurcuClear here. That's the name of our curcumin supplement, um, but you can just type in if you're on our web store, you can type in any of these uh, names here and you can find products that contain those ingredients. Um, Huprazine A is another um, ingredient that supports memory. Lots of studies are showing that it supports memory. Bacopa is um, an herb that supports the nervous system and helps to ensure neurotransmitter balance. Inco biloba has cognitive support properties, neuroprotective uh, properties. Vinpocetine is also neuroprotective. Um, Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory fats, and so you can eat foods that are high in omega-3s. So olive oil, um, you know, olives, um, you know, nuts and seeds are have um, omega-3 properties. So you can consume those in your diet or you can take an omega-3 supplement to just really flood the system um, with those healthy anti-inflammatory fats. And if you do have FADS variants, then um, omega-3s are even more important. So there's a, a number of different genes that kind of piggyback off of each other. Um, and if you have variants in multiple genes, kind of with, you know, that have the same um, components or are touching on different parts of the same things like fats, then you can have compounding effects. So you, if you have APOE4 status and you have FADS variants, um, then it's even more important to supplement or make sure you're getting healthy amounts of omega-3s. Um, phosphatidylcholine is another important nutrient essential for memory, um, brain health, also important in maintaining the integrity of that cell membrane. Um, and then there's a gene that is associated with choline production. That's the PEMT gene. So if you have variants in the PEMT gene and in the APOE gene, um, phosphatidylcholine is going to be really important for you. Um, luteolin reduces neuroinflammation. So all of these are things that you can look into and use to support as supplements to help reduce your risk if you do have that APOE4 um, variant.
And then lifestyle factors are also really important because as we mentioned earlier, um, gen your genes are not your destiny. So just knowing where you have some of these variants um, can really be a game changer. So you know where to focus your energy. You know what you really need to do to reduce your risk. Um, exercise is just number one way to help um, overall with health and with APOE for risk status. So healthy um, exercise, a healthy diet as well. So diets and, um, high in healthy fats, low in refined carbohydrates are the best uh, for APOE. St risk status, avoiding alcohol, really important. Um, consuming coconut oil, that's a great um a great fat. It is a saturated fat, but it is is a healthy one, and it's great for brain health. Um, focusing on lowering your toxic load and supporting the liver. So we want to make sure that we are minimizing our exposures to toxins as much as possible because we know that toxins, um, you know, they can cross the blood brain barrier and toxins are what can create inflammation within the brain. Toxins can lodge themselves into the arteries um, and kind of, you know, get into that space between the lumen of the artery and the artery wall. And those toxins are what then trigger the plaque buildup in the arteries. The plaque is really protective in the arteries and it's also protective in the brain. It's there to, to try and protect the brain and the arteries from those toxins that get in there. Um, but what happens then is the talk or the plaque buildup is disrupting the function of uh, the brain, uh, you, you know, impeding neurotransmitters, um, impeding those synapses. So, and then in the arteries, you know, it's creating that, um, you know, thickening of the walls. So the constriction of the artery. And so it's create contributing to uh, heart disease. So we want to make sure we are lowering our toxic burden as much as possible, you know, from our food, from our environment, from our household products, the th things that we're using on our skin and, you know, soaps and hair care products, all of those things are important to take a look at. And then supporting your liver, because we need to be able to detox these things where we're never going to be able to be 100% toxin free. So there is going to be some exposure and the th air that we're breathing breathing, food that we're consuming, you know, things that we're doing. So we want to make sure we have um, proper detoxification. So important to look at the detox pathways with your genetics and do things to support uh, making sure we're detoxing appropriately and maintaining liver health. So of course, Dr. Connors has the detoxification course. Um, so if you're interested in supporting um, your liver and your detoxification, take a look at that course as well. And then quality sleep is really important when we are sleeping. It's really the time when the brain really kind of detoxes itself. Um, you know, when we're awake and we're performing so many functions throughout the day, um, your brain isn't really able to do a lot of that detoxing. So sleep kind of creates the scenario where your brain actually kind of shrinks a little bit and the fluid that is kind of going through all of those nooks and crannies and spaces in the, in the brain, it's really kind of washing through, collecting all the toxins and then your body is getting rid of those. So sleep is really important for brain health and getting rid of toxins and, you know, reducing risk for Alzheimer's disease. And then just really for mood and any behavioral issues, um, mood issues as well. So hopefully this gives you a little more insight into the APOE gene. Again, if you do have APOE4 status, um, you know, try to implement some of these things and know that, you know, you're not destined for, um, for Alzheimer's disease or heart disease. There's so many things that you can do. And just knowing your status is the first step. So you can focus on these strategies and prevent these things from happening. All right. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.